Hello friends, welcome back to Arun's Anesthesia Academy. This tutorial we will be seeing needling in ultrasound. That is how to visualize the needle when you are doing an ultrasound guided block or any procedure. So you know, when you are not seeing the needle, it is very irritating for the procedure performing person. So at the same time, when you are seeing the needle, it just improves the confidence. And you can improve the success of the block and you can reduce the complication. We have actually 9 steps how you can improve the visualization. So if you can just follow these steps when you are doing a block, you can improve the success. So first step in doing an ultrasound guided block is to follow ergonomics. It should be in such a way that you, the part of the patient which you are doing the procedure or scanning and the machine should be in a straight line. It should be in such a way that when you are doing a block, if you want to make any movements, the hand movement should be in a very minimal way. You should not be turning your head or doing anything like that. It should be only movement of your hand and the eyes. So when you are doing it with ease, there will be less fatigue. You can do the procedure with more patients and obviously the outcome will be good. Second in ergonomics is when you are trying to do a procedure, try to do in sitting position so that you can be comfortable. Next coming to the hands, you should rest the hand in such a way that the ulnar aspect of your hand should be resting over the patient or over any surfaces so that the operating hand or the hand which is holding the probe can be held very easily and you can make fine movements without getting fatigue. After you keep the hand in a proper position, next is how to hold the probe. So when you are holding the probe, hold the probe in more distal position so that you get fine movements. Never hold a probe with pressure because when you are using a jelly, this could lead to jerky movements when you are trying to make fine movements. So never do that. And always try to change the position of the patient so that you can do the procedure comfortably that will finally benefit the patient himself. So ergonomics for giving a block includes three things. First thing is arranging you, your patient and the machine in a line. Second is how to keep your hand. Third is how to hold the probe and that too with less pressure. And always try to do the procedure if possible in sitting position. Next step is focusing. In focusing it is that the ultrasound beam has got a particular feature that it converges and it diverges. The where it converges, that is where you are going to get maximum resolution of the structure which you are scanning. At the same time, that is where you are going to get the maximum resolution of the needle so that you can easily visualize the needle. So whenever you are scanning, try to adjust the depth of the image so that the target structure comes in the focusing point. That is target structure should come in the middle of the screen. So obviously when you are trying to approach that structure using the needle, obviously that needle will also come in the focus zone. So obviously you will get the maximum resolution and you are more likely to visualize the needle. So second step is try to focus. Step 3. Which needle to select? So you would have seen people using 20 gauge needle, 23 gauge needle, 26 gauge needle. There is no hard and fast rule that you should be using a specific size. So as you can see in these images, all the needles can be visualized under ultrasound. There is a misconception that only bigger size needles can be visualized. So even 26 gauge needle can be visualized under ultrasound. So what is the deciding factor? So deciding factor is one is age of the patient. Pediatric patient obviously you will try to do with a lesser size of needle. So 26 gauge needles can be used for pediatric patients. So there will be more comfort for the patient and less damage to the structures. In adults also you can try using 26 gauge needle but as the needle is smaller in size there will be more pressure needed for injection. So you can go to the next size 23 gauge needle. In, in the beginning phases when you are feeling not comfortable like when there is difficulty in identifying the needle with ultrasound even 20 gauge needle can be used. But as you develop or as you improve the skills try to use smaller size needles so that patient will have more comfort and there will be less damage to the structures. Another thing what you can do is you can insert a guide wire inside the needle. So guide wire and the needle will have different echogenicity and obviously that will increase the visualization of the needle. But this is not done usually. And what specifically you have to see is the guide wire should be of a smaller diameter. If the guide wire and the needle shaft both are just snugly fitting, there won't be any echogenic difference and there won't be an improved visualization. 
so there should be a space between the guide wire and the needle shaft that is how you should select the guide wire same thing happens when you are using a stilleted needle if you are using cannula that stillet along with the cannula normally they are snugly fit so in ultrasound there won't be much improved visualization so for ultrasound to improve the visualization of such snugly fitting cannula what you can do is you can do pump maneuver that is slowly you can agitate or rock the stillet inside the cannula so that there will be small micro bubble formation at the tip and you can visualize the tip step 4 where to prick so you have got ergonomics you know how to focus you have selected the needle next is where you have to prick that needle so there are two approaches for ultrasound you have in plane technique you have out of plane technique in in plane technique you know you are going parallel to the beam so when you are going with a lesser angle that is when you are almost inciting the angle and it is reflecting back you will get better image when you are increasing the angle or when you are focusing at a deeper structure obviously you are going to have a lesser visualization of the needle so ideal angle is between 30 to 45 degree so with the skin so that you can visualize a needle perfectly but which is not always possible so to make sure that you are going at 30 to 45 degree angle what you should do is once you have focused just see the depth at which the structure is seen so when you see the ultrasound in the ultrasound in the in the side you will have markers which is showing the depth so what you should do is that based on the law of sines that is you have sin theta cos theta tan theta and all so to get an angle of 30 degrees you should be inserting the needle almost 1.5 times the depth from the center of the probe so you find the center of the probe in the center of the probe there will be a mark so from there you select almost 1.5 times the depth to the structure so there you should prick and then you just guide the needle to the target structure so that will give you an angle of around 30 degrees so when you go more distally that is more than 1.5 times the depth obviously you will get more shallower angle the needle visualization is going to be better but problem is that you have to travel a longer path so that is going to create discomfort for the patient there could be damage to other structures so that is why which is not usually used but if possible you can do that if you are going at a deeper structure what you can do is what you can do is you can do the rocking of the probe so rocking of the probe or otherwise known as heel maneuver or healing maneuver where you pre- put pressure on the distal part of the probe so that you reduce the angle of insertion so you get almost perpendicular beam which is going and hitting and coming back so obviously your needle visualization will improve another thing which you can do in in plane technique is that you can do sky lift technique in sky lift technique what you are doing is you just lift the proximal part of the probe so when you are lifting the proximal part of the probe clearly you can see the center mark mark there so you insert the needle just under the probe once you have inserted the needle you can put the probe back in position and you can follow with a rotin technique and this will help you to insert the needle in the exact 1 mm narrow path where your ultrasound beam is going to come coming to out of plane technique in out of plane technique it is a confusion for everyone to where to puncture so that you can visualize the needle tip properly so if you see the trigonometric principle this will form a uh, what is called as isosceles triangle so if you puncture 1 cm away from the probe and you are directing towards the structure at 45 degree angle the needle will be seen at the same depth that is if you go at 1 cm away from the probe and you puncture at 45 degrees you will be seeing the needle at 1 cm depth if you puncture 2 cm away from the probe that is from the middle of the probe and if you are directing at 45 degree angle you will be seeing the needle at 2 cm depth so that is how you should puncture the in outer plane blocks when you have a very deep structure it is very difficult to go that much far from the probe because you will have to transverse that much long distance and it may be discomfort for the patient and there will be compromise with the needle length so in that case what you should do is that you go almost parallel to the ultrasound probe a little bit away maybe 1.5 cm and you go almost parallel to the probe and always keep an my image in the mind how the needle is going how the ultrasound beam is going and try to focus the ultrasound needle to the target structure that is how you should do when you are doing an out of plane block coming to the needle tip it is one of a simple step 
by which you can improve the visualization of the needle tip so if you face the needle tip towards the probe or needle tip away from the probe that is going to improve the visualization if it is not in either of these the visualization is going to be difficult one thing which you should understand is that the needle tip visualization is not depend upon how you insert the needle because needle tip visualization is not affected by the angle of insertion needle tip visualization is affected only by how it is facing so here i have discussed five steps by which you can improve the visualization of the needle when you are doing ultrasound guided blocks still after doing these things if you are not able to visualize the needle or if you are seeing part of the needle then we have few more steps by which you can improve the visualization step 6 is done when you are not seeing any part of the needle in the ultrasound view so there is only one possibility the needle is not in the ultrasound beam path so either your needle insertion point is wrong or the ultrasound probe would have slid away when you are doing the procedure so what you should do is that first see whether the needle insertion point is correct so if it is not correct rather than taking a second prick what you can do is you can slide the probe to the original position that is what you should do when you are not seeing any part of the needle during the ultrasound procedure so once you have done step 6 or in the initially only you are seeing only part of the needle what you should assume is that the part which is not seen is not coming to the ultrasound beam so you should rotate the probe in such a way that the ultrasound beam comes to the needle's direction and you can do the procedure never try to change the direction of the needle once you have inserted in the patient because that is going to cause it greater discomfort for the patient if you are not seeing the proximal part of the needle that means the proximal part is the one which is gone out of view so you just rotate the proximal part of the probe towards the needle's direction the same thing you can do for when the proximal part of the needle is seen and the distal part of the needle is not seen the distal part is out of the view you can rotate the distal part of the probe towards the needle step 8 is you rock the needle so rocking the needle it is otherwise jiggling with a controlled in and out movement of the needle so that will cause tissue deflection and you will get an idea of the needle path second thing what you can do in the same thing is that you can put a color doppler or power doppler on so with a small your jiggling movement or your in and out movement that is going to create a color shift or a doppler shift and you can note a change in color and that will correspond to your needle direction the last step which you can do if you are not seeing the needle tip or any part of the needle despite doing any of this step is that you can do hydrolocation or otherwise called as hydro dissection so this last step is that you inject a small amount of local anesthetic or normal saline so that you can visualize the black color spreading in the ultrasound so here also there are two possibilities when you are not seeing the spread if you are not seeing the spread of the local anesthetic then one possibility is your ultrasound beam is too far away from the needle direction or too far away from where you are injected the local anesthetic or the normal saline second possibility is you are injecting it intravascular so both of this should not happen so if you are not visualizing the spread of the local anesthetic or saline or anything then you should just stop injecting because that is going to create more problem what you can do is you can try to visualize the needle from the beginning that is from step 4 you can follow and from there you can see so these are the nine steps by which you can improve the visualization so here i have taught about only the basic things which you can do with the technique there are lot of new advancements which has come like gps guided there are needle guides so all these are expensive thing and even your ultrasound machine will have a software which will help in improvement of needle visualization so in few of the machines which i have tried it is not coming very good and it will it may compromise the resolution of the whole image as well so i will recommend you to follow these nine steps so that you can improve the visualization irrespective of the ultrasound machine which you are using so until we see next time thank you and please don't forget to like comment subscribe and share